start with the third session uh, by uh, again now uh, Pranav. So uh, here he will be giving you a hands-on session. So uh, it seems like the most of the participants are having Windows operating system. Um, so um, uh, Pranav will be looking at uh, uh, the, the fundamentals of how to make the system uh, ready for all the uh, uh, transactions and uh, the computation using the Bitcoins or the Ethereum. And uh, so that will be a very good uh, uh, learning session for all of us. So let's welcome uh, Pranav. Yeah, please uh, take over, Pranav. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shakti, sir. Yeah. Uh, so let's get started with Solidity Overview, which is the smart contract programming language for Ethereum. I'm going to uh, jump to my terminal right after this deck. Well, I'll let me first I'll, I'll first take you through the tools that you require, the tools that you uh, have to download and then start working with Solidity. So. A, a language, the way we say that we have object oriented languages. Similarly, we say that Solidity is a contract oriented language. It's very similar to JavaScript and it is used on Ethereum blockchain to code smart contracts. It compiles into a bytecode format which the Ethereum virtual machine recognizes. We are going to use Truffle to compile this code and then migrate it to the blockchain. It is a highly typed language capable of specifying custom data structures. Solidity is a high level object oriented, dynamically typed scripting language for executing smart contracts, which are programs that control account actions within the Ethereum framework. It is an abstract programming language based on contracts. That's one of the reasons we say that it's a contract oriented language. And Solidity is statically typed scripting language that tests and enforces the compile time limits as opposed to runtime. Short description how this actually came up. August 2014, Gavin Wood proposed Solidity language. Then October 2014, Monax, a competing side, adopts Solidity as its language. And uh, August 2015, that was when Solidity was officially launched. Solidity smart contracts can be written on top of Ethereum or any of the blockchain environments that are based on Ethereum. For example, there is a blockchain environment called Quorum. Quorum <clears throat> It has been developed by JP Morgan and Chase, and uh, you can write Solidity smart contracts over there as well. Sample code. So this is a, a sample snippet, a code snippet, I would say, that how exactly the uh, contract looks like. For example, we have written the contract named simple storage. Right? You define your structures that what is going to be your incoming payload data, which will be coming in as arguments to your functions. And it has got a lot of inbuilt uh, storage types. For example, that we have memory and we have storage. Memory is something which is locally used and the scope of the memory is within the function, whereas storage stores for the entire contract execution. And storage stores it on the blockchain. So here's a simple example that sets the value of a variable and exposes it to other contracts for access. The first line clearly notes that the source code is written for version 0.4.0 of Solidity. Pragma is the, uh, is I would say Pragma tells the compiler that what is those, what are those compile time operations which this smart contract requires as, as that would be recognized from the version. 
So Pragma is your assist compiler assistant, right? The contract name is listed in the second line, which is contract simple storage. The line unassigned integers, which is stored data, specifies a state variable of unsigned 256 bit integer called stored data. The set and get functions can be used to adjust or retrieve the variable value. Now coming to the contract structure. These contracts are similar to object oriented language classes. Contracts can include state variables, functions, function modifiers, events, struct types and types of enum declarations. However, contracts may be inherited from other contracts as well. So one smart contract can talk to other smart contract by importing the same into the present contract. If you're writing a contract name abcd.sol, .sol is the extension of the solidity file. So, and you have another contract by the name xyz.sol, then you can actually import xyz.sol and use it within abc.sol. Your state variables are the quantities that are stored indefinitely in contract storage. Functions are the units of code executable inside a contract. Functions we all understand, right? You need to perform any operation in the code, you need to call a function. And for every operation, you have a function. Function modifiers may be used to modify function semantics in a declarative manner. Events are channels of comfort for the EVM logging services. So basically you can emit events from your smart contract and you can log them that this is what has happened. You have, you have saved a purchase order in the blockchain. You can emit an event that a purchase order has been saved or whatever logging you add out there. Structs are categories that are custom specified and can group multiple variables. Structure means if I have to talk about a struct name purchase order. So for a purchase order, what are the what is going to be the structure? That purchase order is going to have PO number, that purchase number order is going to have a date, that purchase order is going to have the value, that purchase order is going to have the list of items. All of this is going to be defined in a struct. And then we have enums, which can be combined with finite set of constant values to construct custom types. Talking about variables in Solidity, we have state variables whose values are stored permanently in a contract storage. Then we have local variables variables whose values are present before executing the function. And then we have global variables. The generic namespace used to provide knowledge about the blockchain includes special variables. V variables whose scope is global. Solidity is statically typed language, which means defining the type of state or local variable during declaration. Every variable that was declared also has a default value depending on its type. And there is no undefined or null definition. You can change the accessibility of the variable and control who can access its value. Solidity treats similar parameters to JavaScript. It's very similar to JavaScript. So if you have experience working with JavaScript, you will you are going to gain uh, this knowledge quickly that how to write Solidity smart contracts. Events support minimal arguments. Function types. 
In Solidity, we have four types of functions, external, internal, public, and private. External functions are always part of the uh, contract interface, which ensures that any other contracts can call the external function. They can also be called via transactions. Any contract can call an external function. An external function cannot be called internally. Suppose that if there is an external function f, then f will not work, but this dot f will work. External functions are often more effective when they receive large arrays of data. Talking about internal functions and internal functions and state variables can only be called internally without using this like this dot the function name that means they can be called within the contract or the contracts deriving from it if you are calling an external function you always need to you need to use this dot f in the syntax and that's how you are going to use it Talking about public, public file functions are also the part of the contract interface and can be called internally. They can also be called via messages. There is an internal messaging service which you can use to call these functions. An automatic getter function is generated for every public state variable. Then we have private functions. Your private functions and state variables are accessible only in the contract they are specified in and not in the contracts they are extracted from. A private function cannot be called from any other contract. Doesn't matter even if you import them. Right? Those are the different type of functions which can be used inside Solidity. Solidity is still a developing language. Uh, every day, uh, I mean, so once in every six months, we do see an upgrade to Solidity and new features are constantly coming in because the entire blockchain is right now under heavy development. Reference types. Reference types includes arrays, structs, and mapping. Arrays are, we all understand what arrays are, right? There are a set of same type of variables in which each particular variable has a specific location. Zeroth element, first element, second element, and so on, which is called as the index of that element. You can access the attribute by the use of the index position. For example, you want to write account then in square brackets five that means you are looking for the fifth element in that array the array scale can be set or adjustable dynamic arrays talking about structs solidity helps user to build their own structure type and struct is the category of various forms of a member of its own type struct is a variable of reference type which can include both value types and reference types. If I have to show you what a struct would be. For example. Struct invoice then string invoice number then teacher would be invoice amount basically the attributes of that of that uh, object right you then uh, we are going to have string as date or you can use date as date 
uh, the object type and these will keep on growing. So these are the, the structures that are being used inside of the contract, right? Mapping. So mapping types are the most widely used type of reference. They're used to store data in a key value pair where the key may be form of built-in value or byte and string. Like any other language, you might think of it as a hash table or dictionary in which a user might store data in a key value format. Mapping one key to its value. <clears throat> the only difference between value type and reference type is the location of the data. Arrays and structs have additional locations of data which determines where data should be stored. That's the baseline difference between value type and the reference type. Okay, now with that, let's actually take a look and, uh, and, and get started with uh, that how do we actually set up a, uh, the Ethereum uh, development environment and what are the tools we need. Now, the first thing that we would need is Ganache, which is your one click blockchain. Do make a note of all of this because this is going to be helpful. It is a part of the truffle suit and Ganache is your one step blockchain. You can have a dummy Ethereum environment with the help of uh, with the help of Ganache. It will give you accounts. It will give you all of it. What you require to establish a connection with Ethereum. The way you are going to test your smart contracts with Ganache in a similar way. I mean, that's going to be the replica environment. If all of it works in your test net, then it will work in the main net as well. Right, I have it already downloaded, else you can download it from here. Uh, uh, it's showing Mac OS right now because, uh, um, because it has recognized the system, but you can download it for other operating system as well. My advice would be that always work with Linux. If you want to work with Linux, then uh, the first step is download the virtual box. The Oracle virtual machine, right? You download this virtual box and then you download Ubuntu 16.04 desktop image. Um, actually it should be in in downloads out here. Yeah, open to desktop. So you can work with 20 as well. Open to just download it. It will give you an ISO image and you can clone that ISO image into the virtual box that you have downloaded from here. You will have a Linux environment in case you are planning to work on Windows and you can then start over the steps that I'll be showcasing you uh, straight away. Right. So just take a note of these softwares that you require and now we can get started. So we have Ganache, which is a truffle suit and we are going to use truffle to deploy a smart contract to the blockchain and we will do try to do some transaction with that smart contract and see how what happens when we do this those transactions. OK. So let me bring up my terminal. Uh, is this visible to all? Is this better or? 
Yeah, this looks fine actually. Yeah, this yeah. is much better. Yes. All right. So let me create a directory called LNMIIT. So first, what we actually need, we need a Node.js version. You can install Node.js. I have it installed, but let me take you to that link uh, to install Node.js. From, from Node.js.org, you can download whichever operating system you're using, and you can download the file. The node version, which is currently right now in my system, this node version is not compatible. You will face many issues with 14.15.1. In order to in order to make it compatible and make everything work, I would suggest go for node version ranging from 10 to 12. So I'm going to use 12.18. So how can I change my Node version? Node.js is a dependency, JavaScript, right? To change my Node version, I need to use NVM, which is a Node version manager. To download Node version manager, I am going to go through this tutorial. If you want, I can give all of these links, which I'm opening right now in a document, and that document can be shared with all of you. So don't worry about it. So I'm going to run this. I'm right now I'm downloading a node version manager. Right. So that's done. Still I'm unable to use it. Why? Because the entry that has been done in the bash RC file over here we need to push that with the source command. Right now the command is active. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use NVM use. Now I have with NVM I can change and switch between node, node versions. It is a node version manager. So I'm going to use node version use NVM use 12.18. Now using node version 12.18. Let me see node version now. It's 12.18. Earlier it was 14.15. Okay. Now we need to start off with with Truffle. Truffle is a suit of tools. Ganache is also a part of Truffle, and Truffle is a suite of tools which can actually help you create, deploy smart contracts to the blockchain and test them. In order to install Truffle with Node, because we had Node already installed, npm install, you can write i or you can just write install, it doesn't matter. Both the commands work, hyphen g globally, Truffle. There we go. So this is pulling the image of uh, or the packages uh, for Truffle. This would be Truffle version 5.1. OK, now we have Truffle installed. Right. Let's use one of the examples given by Truffle and I'm going to use the command Truffle unbox MetaCoin. MetaCoin is a is a token which is developed on top of this Ethereum blockchain and we are going to get the files for that with this. So this is going to be your complete framework in which you can in fact switch between smart contracts and you can uh, do the transactions. 
right? We have these folders, contracts, migrations, test, and truffle config.js. Your contracts is the directory for Solidity contracts. Right? You have a smart contract, which is, I'm not taking a heavy example because we are looking at the code for the first time. So we have taken a, a simple example out here for metacoin.sol, and this is a smart contract. These are different functions out here. Get balance, get balance in ethers, send coins over here, and there is an even transfer is a constructor. The original balance of these coins is 10,000. And the contract name is Metacoin. OK. I'm going to touch down on this contract. I'm just first let me take you through the directory structure. So we are inside contracts. Now another directory is we have migrations, which is for your deployment files. These are your JavaScript files with, and the, these files actually assist you with the deployment. Once we are going to compile this code and we are going to push it to the blockchain. We have the testing directory out here. And this test directory is basically to, for testing out your application and contracts. And then we have the truffle configuration file that with which network it contains the configuration that with which network you wish to connect to. Okay. All right. Now let's get into this uh, into this project. First, this using this test directory, you can full test. Uh, you can similarly you can write unit test cases to test out your contract the way this is written. So this contract would give you a good head start in terms of uh, development. All right, so test cases have passed. Now, let's see that how can actually uh, we connect to Ganesh. Before connecting to Ganesh, there is another JavaScript test which you can utilize. If I am not wrong, it is the test. You have metacoin.js. All right, so that's another test that you can run. Truffle dot slash All right. So in the first account, this smart contract is going to put 10,000 coins. And if we actually look at the contract, this convert lib, what is it doing? We have imported this convert lib, right? We can, of course, import multiple solidity files. That's what we learned from there. It is going to value two ethers. So if we have 10,000 coins, that means this the value of these coins is going to be 20, uh, 2,000 ethers. Okay, that's the conversion that we have actually defined in this convert lib file. And this convert lib file is out here, which returns you the conversion rate. All right. Now, we have the smart contract here. We need to compile it and we need to publish it to the blockchain. 
understand this from the from the very basics that what exactly is happening and keep a note and try to keep a note of uh, uh, the transactions that we make. Let me close all of this. I can't close this. I am just looking for a file in Ethereum. LNMIT. Okay. I'm going to open this with this My Visual Studio Code IDE. Right. So this is truffleconfig.js. Truffle configuration, actually, what is required for you to connect with Ganache? All right, that's the file. Let's launch Ganache. Over here, you can either create a, your workspace or you can do a quick start Ethereum node. Perfect. Now we have the the blockchain, the dummy blockchain started for our transactions. What does Ganache actually offers you? It offers you these 10 different accounts which you can use to make transactions. Remember, we are working with Ethereum. For every smart contract transaction, you need to give some money, you need to shed some money for doing the transaction. Doesn't matter even if it's a private chain. If it's a private chain and some account, for example, the account that I'm highlighting, this account, let's say, is out of money. You need to feed in more ethers into this wallet because the person who is possessing this account he won't be able to do transactions until he has got some ether balance. Right? So we have got these 10 accounts and these 10 accounts are loaded with 100 ethers each. The moment everyone tries to do a transaction, their balance will keep on reducing on the basis of gas which is being consumed by the contract. Okay, what is a mnemonic? These are always 12 seed words. We call them as seed words. Whenever you build or get a crypto wallet, you always get these seed words from, from, your, from your wallet service provider. If you are having a wallet, a crypto wallet in your phone, and let's say you lose your phone today or something goes wrong with your phone. If you have these seed words, then you can retrieve your wallet any at any point of time. So the seed words are unique for every account. There will be some random 12 words which are being used. There is, there is no concept of username over here. It's a concept of seed words. If you have lost, lost your wallet and your wallet contains bitcoins or ethers, the only way to retrieve is to provide the seed words. I'll show you once we jump to MetaMask, which is a browser. Right? So whenever you build a wallet, you need to store and save the seed words properly in some very secure location. If someone gets access to your seed words, anyone can take away your funds. So the security is in your hands. Right now over here for this account, this is the public address, right? For this public address, here's the private key. Here is the 
private key for this account. Every blockchain transaction has got a public key and a private key. I believe as you have gone through the uh, Bitcoin session yesterday, you would have understood that. But let me just quickly shed some light on it. Uh, whenever you send a transaction, if you're if two uh, two persons are transacting, then you always send a transaction to the other person's public address. The concept is very similar that if I am trying to send a courier to one of my friends, my friend, I'm going to say, hey, can you give me your pub, uh, your home address? That home address is like a public address. It is open to all. Anyone on the street can take a look at that address. But when the courier boy actually reaches that address, my friend is going to open the door with his private key to receive the courier. That's the concept of public addresses and the private key. If you lose your public key, it is 100% fine. It's not a problem at all. But if you lose your private key, then you lose everything. You lose everything around your account because your public keys are generated from the private keys. After this, I'm going to give you a quick demo on on uh, that how keys are generated and how cryptography comes at play. Uh, so just bear with me till then. So here we have the private keys of these accounts. Apart from that, we have currently we are in the Genesis block. That's the gas price. You can change this gas price by going to the settings out here. This price is always in V. That's the host name of local host. Right. So it is running on 127.0.0.1. The port number of my computer on which Ganache is running is 7545 and that's the network ID. We have the accounts in which you can configure actually for development that you want to fund accounts with how many ethers you can make it thousand because it doesn't matter these are all dummy ethers but you need ethers to do transactions right then chain where you can specify the gas limit all these values look bulky because they are in v right then you if you want to generate output files and so on this is all what the settings that you can do in ganache if you change any of this then you need to restart the blockchain all right so here we are with these 10 accounts now we are going to we can search blocks over here transactions over here once we once we actually have something so we have block zero right now and this that's the block hash that we have right now how are we going to use the truffle suit to push the blockchain to connect to this blockchain we are going to have we are going to use this development environment in order to use all of this so to use this development environment i am going to uncomment lines here to here in fact this one and i'm going to uncomment these two so that's the first bracket that's the second bracket our ganache is running on port 7545 and host 127.0.0.1. All right. Perfect. Let's save this file. We have saved this. Okay. Now let's compile the smart contract first. Right now, what are the directories that you see over here? Um, I am inside contracts. Let me go one step back. We see these directories, contracts, migration, stress. 
uh, crest and truffle config.js, which have which we have just now edited. Right? That's the edited file. Now, to compile it, it's pretty straightforward. You need to have, you need to follow the right directory structure. Then you're going to run truffle compile. Truffle is famous for these three commands, truffle compile, truffle migrate, and truffle test. So code is now compiled. Because we are already connected to Ganache, what we can do is we can actually straight away run truffle migrate. We are already we have established a connection with Ganache by uncommenting the file, uh, uncommenting the uh, the JSON lines in the truffle config.js. So truffle migrate. OK, so our smart contract is now deployed on the blockchain. If we go to Ganache now, we see multiple blocks out here. Earlier we had just one block, right? Because the contract has been compiled, a bytecode has been created, and those were all recorded as multiple different transactions. It is using the gas from the limit that we have, and this gas is directly proportional to the ethers. Directly proportional in the sense that gas price into gas used is equal to the total gas uh, value. That's a transaction fee, and then you can convert it to ethers. Now, after the deployment of this contract, we see that some ethers got deducted from this balance. We have 99.99 ethers now. Earlier we used to have 100 ethers. Why? Because this smart contract deployment on the Ethereum blockchain has consumed those ethers. If we check over here, first deploying migrations, that's the contract address after deploying the migration, you see the balance deducted. Uh, after this deduction, the gas price was 20 gigaway, and the total cost in ethers was 0.003 ethers. Then deploy contract.js was called, which again consumed 95470 gas. With this price, 0.001 was the price of the ethers that you had to pay. And finally, the MetaCoin coin uh, contract was deployed with this smart contract address. It consumed this much gas. With this price of gas, it consumed these many ethers. So total cost of this deployment was this 0 0.007 ethers. Now our smart contract has been deployed on top of the Ethereum blockchain. And the, the, the balance output has been reduced. It's 99.99 ethers. Let's try to fetch and call some functions which were there in the smart contract. OK, so to access the smart contract and to connect with the smart contracts, you can use truffle console. You're using a Truffle development environment right now. So when you hit Truffle console, you actually get into that development environment. If we want to check that, what are the accounts that are available in my blockchain network? What I can use do is web3.eth.get accounts. 
it gives me the accounts that we are using. So which accounts are these? 0x05 ending with DDE and 0x26 ending with 3b5. If I go back to my Ganache, 0x05 DDE and ending with 0x26 B3 B5. So because my truffle suit is now connected to Ganache and these are this is running on a different port number where it is connected to the blockchain environment where we can do transactions and that's the reason we are able to fetch accounts. Now we fetched some account. We tried to run the some operation that get all accounts for me. Do you see a block mind here? No. Because you are doing a read only call. You're not trying to save anything on the ledger or you are not trying to send anything to anyone. Right? Over here, we have these 10 accounts in the form of an array and uh, let's quickly assign let accounts equals to await we'll wait for it to return the promise eth dot get accounts something failed Let OK, there was an extra space out there. Right now let's define our instance. Let instance equals to away meta coin dot deployed we're setting the instance don't worry if this value comes as undefined it is not going to bother you okay so it should be perfectly fine people feel that this is an error but this is not an error now i want to check if you remember correctly the smart this smart contract has given 10,000 coins, 10,000 of those coins to the to the originator account, which is my first account with which I'm doing the transactions. So let balance equals to away. Wait for it to return the promise. We have defined the instance dot get balance of account. Of we have defined accounts over here, and this accounts contains the array which is returned by web3.eth.get accounts. So I'm looking for the value of first account. Right? We have defined this balance. We can simply do balance dot to number. It says 10,000 coins. What is my account zero? It's the first zeroth element of my array. This one. This is my account zero. Right? If I want to check this balance in uh, in ethers, if you remember, we had a function called if I go back, we have a function called get balance in my ethers which is going to return you the balance by calling the convert lib. So in convert lib, we have the conversion function and from where we are retrieving the balance as it multiplies the values for others RS by two. So what happens with if I have to define let ethers equals to await dot await instance dot 
I'm going to call this function get balance in ethers for which account I want to get the balance. I want to get the balance for accounts of the zeroth element. Done. Then ethers dot true number. 20,000. Apologies, I was using the term 2000. So one metacon is for two ethers. So that's the reason we have uh, 20,000. OK, now we are able to check balances. We are able to get the accounts. Let's try to send the coins between. Between two two accounts, we have got multiple accounts right over here. So this is my my zeroth account, which is ending with DDE. Let's send some balance to EE7. If I check the EE7, which is my second element in the in my array. So I need to check the balance. Let's check the the normal balance of the second or the ether balance. Way away and outside. Okay, ether has already been declared. We'll use ether two to declare. Define. Then ether two dot two number. It, this account doesn't have anything, any ethers, because we haven't transferred any coins to this account. Right now, let's actually send some coins, transfer some meta coins to this account. Okay. So let's do it this way. And since we have already uh, defined out there at the top, which was await meta coin dot deployed. So I'm going to call the send coins uh, function. Send coin from whom? What is this? I'm sorry. What is this function expecting? So if I go to the smart contract over here, you have the send coin where it says the I am expecting as an input the address of the receiver and the amount that you want to transfer. OK, this is what the send coin function is expecting. Now I'm going to send coins to account. Of the second account in our array and I'm and let's transfer. Meta coins. Right. Done. This is a transaction done. We have sent a transaction from account 0x05 ending with BDDE to this address 0x BD 2F to it. We were sending the transaction to this address ending with EE97, but we have sent the transaction to an address ending with 2F28. Why? We have initiated the transaction to that address. Why is it showing me to this address? The reason behind this is that whenever you are doing transactions, you always have to go via the smart contract. So the transaction that we have initiated, we have actually sent the payload data to the smart contract. The way people have addresses, the way people have account addresses, in a similar way, smart contracts also possess their own addresses. 
So whenever you send a transaction, for example, right now I gave an example of a courier boy going to to my the friend's place and I, I have sent the courier to my friend's address. In a similar way, a contract is also going to have an address. Always, whenever you are going to do transactions, you are going to do transactions to the smart contract address. The smart contract address is going to take the relevant inputs, the payload data that you have sent, and then transfer the funds across. Right? So this transaction has now been created and it has been mined. This address 20XBD ending with 2F28 is our smart contract address. If I have to show this to you, I can in fact show this to you. While we deployed and linked Metacoin contract, uh, this is okay. Did we do the deployment there? The contract address is 0xbd ending with 2f28. So, whenever you do transactions, you are actually talking to the contract and you send the contract the relevant data. It's not that you sign directly send the other person the money. No, it always has to go through the contract. Right? So, to understand this transaction, here is the transaction hash, the transaction index, there is the block hash in which this transaction has been mined. This transaction has been mined in block number six. It was initiated from this address and it was sent to this contract address. That's the gas that has been used for processing this transaction. Okay, and over here you have again the, the same logs which are out here. Let's take a look at Ganache. We have a new block mined because we just now did a transaction. Right, if you go to the transactions over here, we see that this was a contract call which was being done. Right? Over here, we see the gas price, gas use, sender's address, two contractors address, and so on. There is one bug in Ganache, which shouldn't bother you much, but the, for example, the gas price, it has used two and these 10 zeros ahead of it. I have tried to set the gas price as five, but it doesn't take. So whatever values you set in the UI doesn't take. For that, uh, you can either use it with CLI, but for testing, it won't matter. So here is your bytecode for the transaction data that you have done, and you have done your transaction. Now, let's check the value of, we defined ethers too, if I remember. To, to accounts of two, right? We have tried to send 2000 coins. Is to await. I'm sorry, my, uh, there's some problem with my computer keys. Accounts to balance two dot two number. We have two thousand. So in balance two, we have defined getting the balance of accounts to, and we see that two thousand coins are now there. If we now try to get balance dot two number i need to define this again
get balance accounts of zero it should be eight thousand and okay so balance zero dot two number it's eight thousand initially this account had ten thousand coins So this way, using this suite of tools, you can actually test your smart contracts. You can deploy them by on, on Ganache. You can build your application and you can connect your, uh, your applications over here. You can invoke a JavaScript and you can use all of the Truffle development commands to, to utilize this. Uh, now we have a lot of articles available on Medium. On, and they are uh, very much self-explanatory. So if you really want to indulge yourself in Ethereum development, this is just a head start uh, to Ethereum. If and uh, uh, I mean there is a lot more to go around it, but that's how you basically try and do transactions in the Ethereum world. Now, apart from that, we talked about public key, private key. How is the transaction data secured? So the command is dot exit if you want to exit from here. One more thing that I wanted to tell you that earlier, if you notice that this build folder wasn't there. Only when I did truffle compile, this build folder got created. If I remove, delete this build folder from here, right? I have removed it. If I do a truffle compile, it is going to create it again. Right? So, truffle. Let me first show you the folder. We have the build folder created out here. It has got contracts. And the, the contracts definitions convert into JSON. Right? Truffle migrate. We have six. Done. We have again 11 transactions out here. Right? The, the 11, we have got 11 blocks over here because we did a deployment of that smart contract again. We utilize the Ethereum virtual machine to compile all of this and put it on the Ethereum. So this is Ganache, the truffle suit. Now there is another tool that is actually used to work with Ethereum or to connect with different uh, networks. And it's a very famous browser. The browser is called MetaMask. MetaMask comes in as a Google Chrome extension. So you go to Google Chrome. I'm going to add, I uninstalled it. I'm going to add Chrome to my extension, add extension. Let's see how can we connect Ganache accounts to MetaMask. So you see this Fox icon over here, and this Fox icon is, uh, is going to be present over here in your extensions. Let's get started. It asks you, do you have an account already? Do you have the seed phrase? What are those seed phrases? This is my account and this is my mnemonic. These are my seed words. These are my seed phrases. Right? 
So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I have 99.97 ethers right now. Okay, the balance got further deducted because I, we had been doing transactions on the network. Now I have copied this, these mnemonics. Let me go back to MetaMask. I will say I want to import my wallet. Okay, let's import the wallet. Do I agree? It will say you just need to paste the seed words from the clipboard. I paste it. You can see the same seed words that I pasted out here. I can set a password. Just set any password for this. Agree and import. Okay, so the MetaMask, this browser based wallet is now connected. It allows you token swapping and we see that we don't have any ethers right now. What's the reason? We have 99.97 ethers. Why there are no ethers here? Apologies, where is it? The reason is because this wallet is directly connected to your Ethereum mainnet. Whereas Ganache, the, the, the local blockchain is running in your system, in my local computer. So you go over here, go to custom RPC, okay? You need to give some network name. For example, give it a private uh, network. Or the simplest, I will tell you the simplest way to go to do is just input your network ID here, okay? So that you, you don't lose context. You enter the network name as 5777. In the RPC URL, you are going to write HTTP colon 127.0.0.1 colon, what's the port number on which Ganache is running? It is running on port 7545 of my laptop. So you go to 7545. What is the chain ID? Now, how will you get a chain ID? You need to connect to a blockchain, right? The, so which blockchain should I connect to? To get a chain ID, and that's a mandatory attribute. So to get a chain ID, go to your Truffle uh, console. You where you are actually interacting with the with the blockchains. Right, you are in the development network. Go to web three dot eat dot get chain ID. Your chain ID is one three three seven, which you have to connect to. Right. So I'm going to go and configure my chain ID as 1337. These are all optional attributes and I hit save. Currency symbol automatically came in as Ether. I'm connected to custom network. My name of the network is 5777. I would have given any name over here like my private network, Pranav's network. Right, close it. Do you see the balance now? These are dummy ethers which have been given to us by Ganache. In this, this account 05987 ending with DDE has got 99.97 ethers and I have imported this wallet to MetaMask. That's the, the asset that I have right now. All dummy ethers. So this MetaMask is your web-based browser, which in return is going to assist you with uh, all of these uh, uh, transactions, which you can use. In fact, if you want to use the same way we have uh, Ganache, similarly you have Remix ID, the Ethereum ID, which where you also get on the similar lines the accounts, but it also helps you with smart contract writing. So over here, you have got the sample smart contracts, 
which have been written in solidity. Right? This is owner.sol, ballot.sol. So these are just different environments which are there to assist you in terms of the contracts. In the language solidity, the compiler over here. Then you have, if you look at these accounts, the way we have accounts in Ganache, you have 100 ethers in each account over here, and you can link it to MetaMask. Right? Okay. So that's a, that's about Ganache, the truffle suit, and uh, how exactly what's there in Solidity. Of course, I very well understand that uh, one and a half hour session is not enough to understand coding to an extent, and this is all something new. But uh, uh, I mean, I'm hoping that at least this would give you a good head start in terms of working with the tools and understanding Ethereum. One question that I want to ask uh, to this group uh, is that do we do we understand that how symmetric or asymmetric cryptography especially works in blockchains? I mean, theoretically or practically, do we understand the that how a because asymmetric key we have been discussing a lot about private keys, public keys and the transactions flowing in the encrypted form. But how is that uh, implemented actually? Any thoughts, comments on that? Any yes, no? Do you want me to showcase you that how exactly? Because that's a very important, that's a basic concept of uh, cryptography, uh, which I believe we should understand. Okay. I don't see any of the responses, but let me quickly spend five to seven minutes of time on that and deal with it. Right. I exited. Now uh, I'm going to create a directory called crypto and I'll, we'll get into this crypto. Let's assume a person one wants to send a file to person two and we are going to run uh, symmetric uh, symmetric encryption. OK, or let's first start with the asymmetric cryptography, which is implemented in blockchains. I'm going to use OpenSSL. And we'll use the RSA, which is Rivest Shaver Adelman algorithm. Out and I'm going to create a private key with the name person one. Always a private key is created first. The private keys that we are looking at right now, those are all first and written. They should be kept even and one zero two for four bits long. Now we have the private key. Using this private key, we are going to generate a public key. RSA, we give the input as person one private dot fam and the output would be public one not sorry person one underscore public dot fam hyphen out form fam hyphen pub out What's wrong with my command? Open SSL. Okay. We see these two keys generated for a person. Every account in Bitcoin or Ethereum 
owns a public key and a private key. Now we deal with transactions the way we are saving data, but in the real world, in the real life, if you are building applications and you want to work on the security aspect of those applications, then you are going to use asymmetric or symmetric key cryptography. Both are different and both are used in a different ways. Asymmetric is considered as more secure in comparison to symmetric because uh, uh, but it is slower if we compare it to the symmetric cryptography. Symmetric cryptography is the one where we use a single key to encrypt and the same key is used to decrypt the file. But in asymmetric key cryptography, you, you encrypt the file with the public key and then you decrypt the file with the private key. So you don't encrypt and decrypt with the same file. OK, so person one private and person one public on the similar lines. I can generate a private key for person two. And using this private key for person two, I can uh, generate the public key for person two. Remember, public keys are always derived from private keys, right? Now we have four keys. Person one's public and private, person two is public and private. Now, let's create a file. Uh, we are testing crypto and we create a file test file.txt. Now, let's say that person one wants to send this file test file.txt to person two. OK. And they want to encrypt this file that only person two should be able to access it. This is how transactions actually flow in the in the blockchain world. So let's assume that this file is supposed to be encrypted. Person one will say to person two, hey, can I get your public key, please? Person two can happily share his public key with person one. Now using person two's public key person one is going to encrypt this file rsa utility hyphen we are performing the encrypt operation and hyphen input key is going to be person two public dot pam hyphen public in Input would be which file are we encrypting? We are encrypting test file or txt. And this, what is the encrypted output that we are going to get? We are going to file text file dot SSL. Done. What do we see in this file? In test file dot SSL. This is the content now. The original content was we are testing crypto out here, but this has now changed to this. Which and this text is called cipher text after conversion. Now this person one is going to send this file to person two via email. This is all in encrypted form and no one else can break it. Only person two will be able to decrypt it because person two has got the possession of his private key, his private key. Now, Let's assume that this file has reached the other person. Open SSL. The other person is going to decrypt this file. Decrypt with an input key. Person two. Private. Hyphen in. What is the input file that needs to be decrypted? That says file dot. And uh, I have an output would be decrypted file.txt. Done. We have decrypted file.txt here. Let's check what's in there. In the decrypted file, we have the text. We are testing crypto. Whenever you send a transaction, you always send a transaction to the other person's public address. In Ethereum, even contracts have got addresses. 
right? And this is how cryptography is actually, and not only is limited, limiting itself to blockchain, but whatever web applications we develop, we or we store uh, files on cloud. For example, AWS cloud services, AWS S3 buckets, uh, Azure or GCP, uh, Google Cloud Platform, all of them offers these two types of cryptographic techniques and the same have been implemented along with hashing in blockchains. Right. Perfect. Uh, uh, I've still taken uh, seven minutes from the Q&A time, but I'm uh, open to to questions now if if there are any. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, thank you so much, uh, Pranav, uh, for the wonderful hands-on session. It would have been open. Uh, yeah, I think very beneficial for the participants. So uh, we are open to questions now. So if you have any questions, please put in your uh, in the question and answer box. I shall uh, take it forward with Pranav. If you have any questions. I hope people didn't sleep after the lunch time. It's always <laughs> take sessions after lunch. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let's see. I think uh, yeah. So it's it's always better to have a hands-on session after now. I think people will be yeah slightly active. I think. <laughs> right. So if you have any questions, please put in the uh, question answer box. Be it any questions, thoughts, comments, you have anything, uh, please feel free to share. Yeah, it may not to have any uh, question actually. It can be a comment also. <laughs> Anything related to apart from Ethereum, you want to understand anything related to yeah. any other web application development or uh, any other blockchain platform? Okay, so yeah. how are public yeah. keys securely transmitted? Public keys are meant to be public. It doesn't matter that you, I mean, you don't need to transfer the public keys to anyone. You only encrypt the files or you encrypt the transaction and then you send it over. What you need to secure are the private keys. Public key, even if you even if you paste your public key or publish it on google.com, it doesn't matter. Always secure your private keys. Keep it in, in the blockchain world. For example, we have used, we have seen MetaMask wallet. In the MetaMask wallet, uh, we imported the seed words and that wallet contains our keys now. In a sim in, to be more secure, if you are storing cryptocurrencies, then you need to have uh, the, the safest wallets are the hardware wallets, which are just like your plug and play, just like your pen drives to your computer in which you can secure your keys. So you don't have to rely on any crypto exchanges. You don't have to rely on any software or cold wallets, but you actually keep your hardware uh, inside your bed box so that no one take can actually take them off. So always take care of your private keys, public keys. Don't bother about them because they are meant to be public. Yeah, thanks uh, Pranav. So any more questions? So that's one more question coming up. Is dealing in cryptocurrency is legal in India? If so, may I know the relevant legal matters like KYC practices? Okay, so this is the biggest challenges with the with the crypto world around the globe because 
as you mentioned or as you heard that we are only dealing with public keys and private keys. If I if I take you, let me quickly share my screen again for a second so that we don't miss out. Now, is my screen visible? Mm, not no, at thing. Not at not at. Okay. Uh, all right. Is it visible now? Mm, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we see these blocks in the Ethereum world. You can this is a public blockchain, and you can see that these blocks are getting mined. Now, if I open up this block in particular, the transactions, and I see that this block has got these 225 transactions in it. If you open the transactions, we see everything from who is in the form of the keys. Right? All of these are different addresses. You cannot actually figure out that which person is whom. So the challenge with the crypto world is that the drug trading, money laundering, all those payments are being done in Bitcoins in crypto because people cannot catch hold of that who is transferring those funds from where. We are only dealing with these public anonymous addresses. Right now for that matter. Now the exchanges, as you mentioned rightly in your question, exchanges have started uh the kyc process know your customer process where you need to feed in the, your bank account you need to give your details from where you are going to do the transfers the transactions of cryptocurrencies plus you need to give your either your pan card or your Aadhaar card as one recognition in the united states you might have to give your a social security number it, it varies from country to country so there is a kyc process now in India, if you want to go and buy cryptocurrencies, then you can go for uh, Wazirx. There, uh, it is a trustworthy exchange because they are working with Binance, which is a very reputed exchange. So on this exchange, you can log in, you can link your bank accounts, and there are multiple cryptocurrencies which are available out here, which you can actually buy. So uh, uh, on Bazirex, uh, you can do the, your KYC and create an account and start trading. If you want to take up the the investor side of it. Yeah, yeah. How can this technology be used in banking? So for there is a there are a lot of trust issues, there is a lot of security which is actually required in the banking industry. And uh, not only the, the normal payments, issuing of commercial papers, which is, uh, a, a, which is a very dispute friendly issue, I would say. That can be done on blockchain. Recently in the news, I heard that one of the banks has issued their commercial paper on the blockchain. Now, with all of your transactions getting stored in an immutable format, at the end of the day, right now, if you have an account with uh, with SBI, right? If you have an account with SBI, though no one is going to do that, I'm not saying that anyone is going to get into the database and they are going to change the values, the balance in your account, but still we are prone to a lot of such issues where the values do get changed. But with immutable ledgers coming into the picture, you can rest assured that the transaction which has been saved once, it cannot be changed. There is no way to change it because this is an immutable ledger. And plus, it is a distributed ledger. If someone tries to manipulate the system for anything, for anything, there are so many frauds happening around the world. If someone tries to manipulate the system, then that person has is also responsible or he he or she has to convince other blockchain nodes in the network that hey please manipulate it along with me because manipulating one node cannot serve the purpose which ensures a perfect secured environment for banking in this in this industry and all of these banking operations can actually happen r3 corda is one of the uh, DLTs, it's not a blockchain platform, which is doing pretty well in the banking industry. And the second blockchain platform is Ripple. Ripple is known for its fast payment transactions, and uh, those fast payment transactions are 
uh, they're handling it pretty well. Just one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you, you see that? Okay, yeah. How do we pay in terms of Bitcoins when ransomware people demand money? So to pay in Bitcoins, you need to possess Bitcoins if uh, someone is asking you money and and uh, you have to pay. Uh, the only thing the other person who is expecting a payment, the, the only thing is that the other person is going to give you uh, their public address that, hey, can you transfer the payment to this address? It would be just one address. That's it. And you need to transfer, give, give that money. There is no process of entering a, an account number. The IFSC code, there is no such process. The keys that we have, I have showed you over here uh, on Etherscan. So, so this is a uh, transaction. Now, this is the address from where the transaction has originated. And this is the address that the other person is going to give you that, hey, you need to transfer funds to this address. When you have an account, when you have a wallet in any of the blockchain exchanges uh, or crypto exchanges like Wazirx, you buy cryptocurrencies and you can transfer the cryptocurrencies to an address. So I, I have a general question. So, uh, so in India, it is uh, as of now, it is not allowed, right, to have any Bitcoin transactions. Well, right now it is allowed. Recently, in the uh, the, early, the the most recent Supreme Court hearing, which was I believe uh, uh, seven to eight months back, they allowed the mm -hmm. holding of crypto again. But before that, it was it was banned. You are absolutely okay. right. But right now, it is allowed. All of okay. these exchanges were actually shut down uh, when that uh, that result came out. But uh, now it is allowed again. Okay, okay. Right now in India, we are not, I mean, people are not accepting, uh, uh, you know, payments for buying a pizza or buying some grocery with Bitcoins or Ethers. But uh, right. in many countries, we have, we have Bitcoin ATMs, we have Ether, Ethereum ATMs. You can, mm -hmm. if you have cryptocurrency, from that ATM, you can actually withdraw the, you can change quickly change Bitcoin to your fiat currency. For example, euro, okay. dollar, whichever, and you can withdraw the money. So, okay, yeah, uh, there are in in many countries now. You have those ATMs, and you can pay for stuff with crypto. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, so uh, India is not that popular as of now, I think. Right. So, do you have any data like how many people are uh, presently using bitcoins and in India, especially? um there is no such data available to be honest mm -hmm. uh, and neither we can get to know the location the only location that we can actually get to know is that where are the bitcoin nodes located so there is this okay. website uh, bitnodes.io where we can actually see the denomination of the bitcoin nodes around the world so right now there okay. are 11000 nodes around global uh, bitcoin nodes and we see the majority in Americas. Europe is completely dark, and there is some portion in China uh, uh, over here in in this yeah. region and uh, in Australia. And for India, we have very less uh, denominance in Africa. We have none because I mean it's the just a distribution, but we we cannot. There is no way to figure out that how many people in India have got Bitcoin. That's right. That's right. I am, because I am. it's all it's an it's an anonymous network, and that's yes, actually yes. the biggest fear for the uh, for the governments to make it legal. Because right now, if someone sees that from one account, uh, hundred million have been transferred, you can catch mm -hmm. hold of that person, right? You can know that yeah. what was this the income tax department last? What was this payment for? They are being scammed. Yeah. But in Bitcoin, you don't have any identity. So. Yeah, that's a, the biggest legal trouble uh, around <laughs> using crypto uh, in the right. in the industry right now. But yeah, for for the web application building, uh, it's it's uh, it has gone a long way along, and uh, I mean, a lot of industries are now a lot of companies um, have invested a lot 
in building decentralized applications. Payments is just one small part of uh, this technology. The bigger part is the decentralized applications being built on top of blockchain. That's right, that's right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bruno. No problem. Any more sir. questions? Uh, Oh, I think there is one more has come up. Uh, mm -hmm. Normally, the instructions they tell you where to get bitcoins from. Yeah, I, I think it's more of a comment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. So uh, I think we had a very interesting session today, like uh, the hands-on session. I think this is the first. Uh, hands on session in this FTP. So yesterday was a more of theoretical concepts and uh, that thing. So, uh, so this would have been very beneficial for the participants, I think. So uh, this video will be shared uh, among all of you so that you can go through it uh, and uh, make uh, yourself also comfortable um, uh, using these um, uh, related tools and all for uh, the Bitcoins and Ethereum. So let us thank uh, the uh, presenter, uh, Pranav, for this wonderful session. And uh, so his email also will be shared with you uh, so that if you have any doubt, uh, so that you can uh, converse with him uh, for uh, more details on this work. So there's one more question that has come out. Let me see. Yeah, good session. So there's an appreciation from one of the participants saying that it's a good session. So thank you so much, Pranav. So it's Glad wonderful you like to see you here. My <laughs> yeah, yeah, highly appreciate your uh, uh, spending your time, uh, precious time here. No, thank no, you no. So much. It was my pleasure. I'm just doing my duties, and uh, uh, good luck, everyone, with your blockchain journey. It has just begun. Uh, it has got a long way to go, and uh, don't hesitate to ask us any questions at any point of time uh, and uh, keep studying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for now. Yeah. Bye bye. All right.